Hi guys, if you're here for the giveaway, you can skip forward to the timestamp that I've left below in the description for a chance to win one of these posters in the background, actually whichever watch that you'd like that this website offers. So skip forward and otherwise this is 10 watch facts that you didn't think that you knew. Okay, so with watches being such an old piece of technology, there's definitely no shortage of cool things and stories to hear about regarding timepieces. So this is my top 10 watch facts that I think are very cool to know. So number one, French luxury timepiece maker Cartier say that they're the ones who invented the actual wristwatch. Louis Cartier, one of the founders of the brand, is the one who actually decided to put the uh, wristwatch on the wrist of an actual pilot. His name was Alberto Santos Dumont. Essentially, this makes the original wristwatch a pilot's watch. Number two, the first notable method of recording time was in about 1500 BC through the use of a sundial, which is actually pretty similar to the way we track time now, except of course it's loaded with errors. The sundials actually were only able to tell you the local solar time. They had to be corrected for things like longitude and of course daylight saving. They also had to be corrected for the fact that the orbit of the earth is actually an elliptical shape and not a perfect circle. And they used that actually using what's called the equation of time for the method of correction. Rumor has it Nintendo was gonna use this as the title for one of their N64 hits, but they decided against using something so nerdy. That was a lie. Number three, in case you thought the most expensive watch ever sold in an auction was Paul Newman's Daytona for about $17.5 million. I think that was in 2017. You'd be wrong. The Patek Philippe Grandmaster Chime with the reference number 6300A-010 was actually the most expensive one ever sold. This was a watch intended to commemorate Patek's 175th anniversary. It was an incredibly complicated watch. It featured a sort of double reversible face, over 1300 movement components, and also had things like a perpetual calendar, uh, a minute repeater, a second time zone, and about 16 other complications. And this was sold for a new record of, wait for it, $31 million. <laughs> $31 million. Number four, the G-Shock Resist Badge was originally based on three basic requirements that had to be a 100 meter water resistance, a 10 year battery life, and a survivable drop height of 10 meters. All this was inspired by one of the engineers called Kikuo eBay, which by the way, I talk about him in this video right here about the, the G-Shock DW5600BB. Anyway, so Kikuo eBay was heartbroken that he dropped his father's pocket watch and so he decided to go out and make a more rugged piece of jewelry that could resist shock. So next time you're sad because your girlfriend has dumped you, just remember, great things come from heartbreak. Number five, modern wristwatches did not become popular until about after the First World War. It was there that in the trenches that soldiers actually had taken their old pocket watches and sort of soldered chains around them and decided to become... A to turn them into blah, 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 and decided to turn them into sort of more portable versions of pocket watches. Number six, the Omega Speedmaster was the first watch to ever go to the moon and had to go through a very, very, very extensive list of testing that I'm going to put up right here. And this had to be done before it could go out into outer space. What you may not know, however, is that the reason that the original used a Hesalite crystal, which is basically cheap plexiglass, as opposed to something more rugged and durable like a sapphire, is because of the shattering property. Now, plexiglass, when it shatters, it typically likes to break into less fragments, usually like about two to three, whereas sapphire, when it breaks, it typically shatters into many fragments. And so that sort of poses a risk for astronauts, because if you have a sapphire crystal that shatters, you're going to have a million little glass shards floating around. And of course, we don't want that because you would poke somebody's eye out. Number seven, all the gears and uh, the moving parts in your watch movement generate, of course, a lot of friction. And so what watchmakers back in the day used to do is actually cut out literal rubies and cut them into their desired shapes and with smoothened edges to basically reduce the friction and the wear and tear on these mechanical parts. But of course, in modern day times, we don't use actual rubies. We use lab made rubies, which are called synthetic rubies. This lowered the cost at the price of not being able to tell people that you had rubies in your actual watch. Number eight, if you look at advertisements for watches, what you'll typically notice is that the time on the actual watch is typically 10-10. If you look at the posters on the back, you notice how they're all 10-10. So this is called happy hour. What essentially it is, is an aesthetically pleasing sort of balanced look that 
watch advertisers will use to just sort of make their watch look a bit more aesthetically pleasing. I'm guilty of doing this as well. If you look at my recent review on the Omega Seamaster, which the link is in the description below, you'll see that on the thumbnail, it is showing happy hour 1010. So happy hour is actually not what you thought it was. Number nine, before the first world war that I mentioned earlier, it was actually women who were the main wearers of wristwatches which is weird considering that watches is a typically more masculine dominant field. Just as an example, my viewership on this channel is literally like 99.2% male. And so that goes to tell you something that for some reason, women don't like watches as much as men, but yet they were the original wearers of wristwatches. The last and final fact, the first Bulova Accutron was released in 1960. It literally used the vibrational frequency of a tuning fork as opposed to a balance wheel to maintain its time accuracy. This basically made it essentially the world's second electric watch after the Hamilton Electric in 1957. Okay, so the moment you've all been waiting for to the giveaway. Now, if you look behind me, these posters are made by a website called 937. They make very high quality, amazing watch prints. So for our 1000 subscriber giveaway that we've just passed recently, I want to say thanks to you guys for being such an amazing community. Thanks for engaging. Thanks for sharing your stories with your watches and your opinions and reviews on your own watches down in the comments below. Could not thank you guys enough for this 1000 subscriber milestone. Many, many, many more to come. So glad you guys have decided to join me on this YouTube journey of mine. So I'd like the chance to say thank you and give back to you. So what I'd like from you guys is if you're interested in joining the giveaway, like and subscribe, share the video with your friends and comment below. All I want to know is what is the most meaningful watch to you? It doesn't have to be necessarily something that you own. It could be something that you want, or it could even be, let's say you are gifted uh, a watch by one of your parents as a graduation gift, let's say. I want to know what your favorite watch is, regardless of what it is, whether it's fashion watch, mechanical watch, quartz, whatever, your most meaningful watch and why it's most meaningful to you. Once I decide the winner, I'll contact you guys and what you're going to be able to do is pick from the website uh, a print of a, of a watch that you like and I'll just contact you. You'll let me know which one you want and then I'll send that right to your door. So on that note, thanks again guys for a thousand subscribers. Subscribe down below and join the movement. Many, many, many more videos to come and some great content on the way. Once again, thank you guys so much. Could not have done it without you guys and until next time, take care.